Hello everybody and welcome to Skip Allen Paints. An interesting question came up in my class, Discover the Differences in Painter X3, which is being held at the Digital Art Academy. Um, and by the way, registration closed yesterday, so you can't enter it right now. When the first class is over, um, the classroom will go to open enrollment and you can enroll uh, in the class again. But right now it's uh, closed. Anyway, what the question was is I, somebody wanted to bring in a second image uh, as a clone source, not the 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 uh, ginger lilies that you see here, but something different. And they wanted to pinpoint where that clone source was going to go. And actually what they wanted to do is they wanted it at uh, two inches uh, from the side and at one inch from the top. So they actually wanted to place it right here. So how can we do that? Well, it turns out it's easier than I thought. I tried several times, but I couldn't get it to work. And then I realized what I was doing wrong. Anyway, so let me show you what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the source and we click there. And what I'm going to bring in is the test image here. This is a document that's 500 by 500 uh, pixels per inch by 100 PPI. And notice that our main image is 1189 by 890 um, and by 100 PPI. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open that image up. Oh, got to select it. Sorry. <laughs> open that image up. Now, if I turn on my tracing paper, you will see the rectangle right there in the center. And that's what Painter does. It kind of puts it, uh, centers the whole kit and caboodle. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to move this around and make all this fit. And I can do that by opening up the show source image. Because when I open the show source image, then um, I can manipulate this and save it as a new uh, clone source. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to change the size of this so that it will fit in my regular document. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to take my magic wand and I'm going to click out here on the white area. Now, when I click, that's telling Painter that I'm about to make some changes to this source image. And that, with that, you will get a box that says you can edit the source image. And when we you return to the document window, you will be prompted to create new update or discard the changes you made to the source image. All layers will be flattened and you will lose all undo steps. And if you want to preserve the layout, choose go up to file. And I can't do that now. File, export source image and export it to wherever you need it before returning to the original document. Okay, so I'm going to say, okay, yeah, 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 I know that. All right, so I've selected the white area on the canvas, and I'm going to come up here to select, and I'm going to invert the selection. Now I can go select float, and that floats the red square up above the canvas layer, and I can move that around. Now I want to come back to the canvas layer, and I want to come up to canvas, uh, canvas size. Okay. The size is 500 by 500, but I want to make it into that 1189 by 890. That was the original document. So I pull open my calculator and I have 1189, which is the width minus 500 equals 689. So I need to take 689 and divide it in two. Now I'll divide it in two so that I know how much to place on each side. Uh oh, I messed up. Let's try that again. 1189 minus 500 equals 689 divided by two 
equals 344.5. So that means I put 344, point, uh, 344 on one side and 345 on the other. Okay, it's not exactly perfect, but it's close enough. So to increase the width, then I'll minimize that. I want to come to pixels on the left and we'll make it 345, 344 and pixels on the right, 345. Okay, and now I want to go back to my calculator and I have 890. That was the height of the original document. Minus 500, which is my new document, equals 390. That's how much I need to put on the top and bottom, but divided by 2, it gives me 195 on each side or top and bottom. So 195 and 195. And we say, okay. And there we go. We've now got my document the right size, except that if I look over here, for some reason or another, the PPI has changed to 72. And it, we can't leave it at 72. It's got to be 100 PPI. And I don't know if that's a bug or what, but it, it changes on its own. Doesn't matter because we can come up to edit, I mean, canvas, resize. And all I have to do is make sure constrained fi file is off. And all I'll do is add to the resolution uh, and make it uh, 100 PPI and say, OK. Now you can see the 1189 and 890 and 100 PPI. That's very important to make sure that those are the same. I'll come up to Canvas, go to Rulers, Show Rulers, Canvas, Rulers, Snap to Ruler Ticks. Then I want to come over here and click on the 2 so that I put the guideline right on 2 inches from the side. And then I want to click on the one so that I get the guideline right on the one. Now I'm going to come up to the layer where the square is and using my layer adjuster tool, I will just move the square right up to the point that I wanted to uh, place this extra image. Okay. Now that that's done, all I have to do is come back over here when I touch my my document, my new document, I mean my clone document, I get the option to create a new clone source, update the one that I'm working on, or discard. And really all I want to do is update the one I'm working on. And so I just say OK to update. And there now when you see the tracing paper on, looking at my original, I have placed that little square exactly where I wanted it inside of this frame. And now I could begin cloning that square. Obviously, it wouldn't be a square if I were trying to do it in this brush. I just used a square uh, to make it easy to see what we were doing. But you can do add as many other images to this image you want and actually place them in exact spots that you would like to have them in. Okay, that's it. I hope that uh, helps and this will give you something else to do with that clone source image. Um, this show source image and changing and playing with it to make new clone sources. It's really, really a powerful tool. I love this cloning feature in Painter. Okay, have a good day. Bye-bye.